This video is sponsored by Skillshare. In this video, we are going to look at some of the best publishing side hustles for 2023 so that you can finally get started building that life of freedom and making money online. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join me here today. And if learning about how to make money online with things like self-publishing is something that you're interested in, you are in the right place. The majority of the videos that I make for my YouTube channel are usually about self-publishing books and how to do that. And I know that's why the majority of you come to my channel, but I thought that there might be some of you out there watching who maybe aren't really enjoying publishing books, or maybe you are and you just want to supplement your self-publishing income with something else. Or maybe you don't fall into either of those categories and you have never thought about starting a side hustle. Maybe this video will give you some ideas on a side hustle you might be interested in and want to start doing that you'd never thought of before. So rather than doing a video on a whole bunch of different side hustles that are kind of really unrelated and have nothing to do with each other or have nothing to do with self-publishing and the things that I talk about on my channel, I decided to put together what I think are the best side hustles within the publishing industry that you can get started with and earn an income from in 2023. Since I think that most of you are here because you are interested in books or in publishing. And there are lots of other things you can do within the publishing industry other than just creating books. These are side hustles that you can do part-time if you are just look, looking to make a little bit of extra money or they have the potential to be something that you can take on full-time as well. The other great thing about all these side hustles is that they can be done virtually, meaning you can do them from anywhere in the world from the comfort of your own home and in your pajamas if you want to. I'm going to go and get straight into them. Let's go. The first side hustle is proofreading. Do you read books yourself and constantly notice spelling errors? You probably do and you're thinking, did they not get anybody to edit this book before they published it? You could make this your side hustle. There are lots of different editors that can work on a book in its drafting process and proofreaders are usually the last to come in and edit a book. By the time a proofreader gets to a book, it will already have been edited by multiple different people and the majority of mistakes should have already been picked up but a proofreader will basically read a book that is finished and go through and see if they can find any spelling or grammatical errors that might be left. You don't offer advice on the story or the structure or the book of the book or the way that things have been phrased and things like that. You're purely just looking for things like spelling mistakes. And while you do need to pay attention to detail and keep an eye out for things like typos, you are essentially being paid to read books. And if you can do this in your favorite genre of book, well then that's a bonus. And this side hustle doesn't even have to be limited to just books. Proofreaders are hired to read a whole range of different documents in a range of different industries. The next side hustle is cover design. Every book needs a cover and a cover is what basically sells a book. So authors and publishers know how important their book cover is and they always want to do the best that they can to get the best possible cover for their book that they can, which in a lot of cases means outsourcing this part of their book process. Writers usually like to stick to doing just that, the writing, and get professionally made covers for their books. You obviously will need some sort of design experience or at least willing to do some kind of training or some courses to learn graphic design principles and elements. And using a professional graphic design software is going to be important too, because the covers will need to be as high quality as they can possibly be. And you may need to be able to provide multiple different formats and things like that to the author or to the publisher. Usually a cover designer will work within one particular um, genre of book. For example, making covers purely for crime thriller books because each genre has its own style of cover design that sells very well to that particular audience or those particular readers. And it would be really beneficial to become known as the expert in that genre or a designer specifically for a particular genre of books. Authors will always recommend people who do a good job to other authors. So that is another good reason why it is really good to niche down into one particular genre of books. There is a couple of different ways that you can go about 
being a cover designer. One is to create pre-made covers. So that means you aren't creating covers for any particular author or publisher or anyone specific. You basically sell them on your website, sort of like having an online store, or you can even sell them in some uh, groups like Facebook groups where authors are looking for pre-made covers. And this can be a good way to build up an inventory of sorts of covers that you can sell. But keep in mind, pre-made covers are also sort of sold for quite a cheap price because of the fact that they are pre-made. The other way that you can do it is by finding clients and making book covers specifically for them. You can charge a higher price when you do this because you are creating custom covers and it's also a really good way to generate repeat customers. Now I would like to take a quick minute to thank our friends and partners over at Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 different countries. It's a place for people like me who just love learning and getting inspired to be creative. If any of the side hustles in this video take your fancy and you do want to brush up on your skills before you get started, Skillshare will be able to help you with that. I love that Skillshare has such a massive range of classes available to you across a whole heap of different topics. I have been using Skillshare to learn how to create illustrations that I can use in my books to make my books as unique as possible. A class I took this week was called Drawing Toward Illustration by Tom Froze, but because Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, it is ad-free, which is great for productivity less distractions, new premium classes are always being added. Skillshare has a great offer for the first 1,000 people to use the link down in the description box below to get a one month free trial of Skillshare. This trial gives you complete access to the full library of classes so you can go and learn something right now, today. Now let's keep going with the next side hustle, which is social media management. Like I said before, writers just wanna write. But the reality is that writers also need to market their books, along with a whole lot of other things that they need to do that isn't actually writing. And it can sometimes get a bit too much, especially if an author or a writer is starting to do really well. We all know social media is a crucial marketing strategy for all authors and publishers. It's how to find new readers and how to stay connected with current fans of their books. But social media takes up a lot of time. And then there's the fact that there are so many social media platforms that you need to be on. There's so much to keep up with and it can get very overwhelming. And that's where a social media manager can come in. Extremely helpful. A social media manager would help to schedule posts across all platforms, help to respond to their audience's comments. Possibly they may need to help creating the content for the posts. Sometimes they might need to help with things like managing Facebook groups as well. The great thing about this kind of side hustle though is that you would usually set it up as a monthly contract type of thing that would hopefully be an ongoing thing, which means that you would then have a recurring monthly income so you know you've got an expected income that's going to be coming in every single month. The next side hustle is VA or virtual assistant. A virtual assistant is exactly like any other assistant that you would have in a physical sense. So someone who works in your office for you, for example, like if you worked for someone face to face, but in this case, it is all done virtually. An author or a publisher would hire a VA to do a whole range of different things. And that would all depend on the services you're willing to offer or what it is that the author or publisher would want from you. Things like admin work, general admin work, paperwork, maybe social media management and email management, just to name a few. What types of things that you would do would really be up to you. The kind of skills that you have, the things that you like enjoying to do, and the services that you would want to provide to someone as their assistant. A virtual assistant would usually be hired on an ongoing basis to help out on a daily basis with the general running of that author or that publisher's daily workload, daily schedule. But there are times when a VA could be just hired on a contract basis for a short term type of arrangement just to help out at maybe a particularly busy time. For example, if an author does have a book launch happening or something like that. But generally, a VA would usually be someone who works on a long term ongoing basis. The next side hustle is ghostwriting. If you have solid writing skills, this one could be for you. As a ghostwriter, you could write a complete book for someone who then puts their name on it as the author. You are never connected to those books. 
once you have finished writing them as a ghostwriter. Now, before anyone gets upset saying how dare they take credit for a book they didn't write, who would even want to be a ghostwriter? They could just write it and put their own name on it and make way more money. But actually, ghostwriting is a lot more common than you would think. A lot of famous people get ghostwriters to write books for them. A lot of autobiographies are written by ghostwriters instead of the person themselves. And then maybe there's a situation where sometimes there is a popular author who maybe passes away but fans still want books from them. For example, Robert Ludlum who wrote the Bourne series passed away in 2001 but kept publishing books for years after. Also the super popular series of Goosebumps books for kids were actually reportedly all written by ghostwriters and not the actual author R.L. Stein. Basically if someone wants to publish a book but they're not great at writing or maybe they just don't have the time to write it they can hire a ghostwriter. The next side hustle is formatting. All books need to be formatted correctly before being published no matter what publishing platform that they are using. Amazon KDP is the most common one out there and if any of you watching have published a book through KDP before you will know they have rules and they have guidelines on how your document needs to be formatted before you will be able to upload it into your KDP account to be sold on Amazon. Then if you do want to publish through additional publishing platforms, for example, let's say Ingram Spark, they have their own set of rules and guidelines on how your documents need to be formatted. And they aren't all the same, which if they were, would be extremely helpful, but they're not. And then if you wanna have both paper books and eBooks for sale, they both have different formatting requirements as well. So you would need to format your paperback one way, and then you would need to format your eBook a different way. Oh, and then there are some authors who do like to have some pretty chapters in their books where they use something like a nice decorative font, maybe put an image on the chapter page and things like that. And as a formatter, you can help with all of that. And what is great about this particular side hustle it, is that it really is one that pretty much everyone will be able to do. And it is fairly easy to do. Pretty much anyone can do it once you have gotten familiar with the formatting requirements of each platform and what each platform needs in terms of their formatting requirements. You can also purchase a software, something like Vellum, which you can then use to create those decorative chapters. And then you would have a service that you can offer to authors and publishers and everything that you would need to start a formatting side hustle. The next side hustle is illustrating. If you do have illustration skills, then you can build up quite a lucrative side hustle as an illustrator. Illustrators can be used for a variety of different things in the publishing industry, but the most common one would be to illustrate children's picture books. And let me tell you, you can make a pretty penny with this one if you can create illustrations and designs that children's authors love. At first, when you are new, when you're unknown and you're building up a portfolio of examples of your work, you probably won't be able to charge top price, but illustrators who become in demand can charge thousands of dollars to illustrate a children's book. It isn't just children's books though that illustrators are hired for. Quite often, fiction authors like to have illustrations made of the characters from their books. So basically putting a face to the characters that they've been writing about. Sometimes those illustrations are added to the book or sometimes an author might like to release a special edition of a book with illustrations included in it. Or sometimes authors like to use those illustrations as maybe freebies or as fan art and added bonuses that they can send out to fans with their books or as part of a special edition of a book that they have released. Now we are getting near the end and the next side hustle is narration. A lot of authors like to make both print and audio versions of their books because audio book platforms like Audible are hugely popular these days and a narrator basically reads the book out loud while recording themselves doing it and that becomes the audio version of the book. Narrators usually charge per hour for however long it takes for them to read the book. So if you are reading books that are quite long in length that that can really add up. But also sometimes a narrator can enter into a deal with an author where rather than being paid a full upfront fee for the work, they can go into a royalty agreement. So instead of being paid upfront, you receive royalties from the sale of the audiobook until your fee is paid. A lot of narrators do do that because 
And narrators do end up being quite expensive in a lot of cases. And some authors will ask to do this kind of arrangement to be able to have the audiobook made when they don't really have the budget upfront for it. As a narrator, you will need to have some really good high quality recording equipment because it will need to be crystal clear and loud. But those types of equipment are quite affordable these days. And now we are down to the last one. The last side hustle we are going to talk about today is translating. I know that some of you watching are not from English speaking countries or your first language may not be English or maybe you just happen to speak multiple languages. So this is a great side hustle for those of you who speak languages other than English because there are definitely not a lot of people who can do this one. So particularly fiction authors do like to have their books translated into different languages so that they can reach more fans and build up their readership in other major countries who don't necessarily speak English. Of course, they will need to hire someone to do this for them. This is not something that everybody can just do or learn fairly quickly either. I think it goes without saying that you need to be fluent in whatever language you are going to be doing translations for. But it is a great little side hustle to put to use some of those really unique skills that you have. And that is the list of publishing related side hustles that will be great to start in 2023. I actually came up with a lot more than I expected to come up with when I first started making this video. So I really do hope that you have come across something that you think sounds exciting and that you would maybe like to start doing in 2023. If you have watched this far to the end of the video, I really do appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.